the Tasmanian tiger was declared extinct in 1936. The last known one, named Benjamin, died behind the bars of the Hobart Zoo, pacing a concrete floor as cameras rolled. That moment was supposed to be the end of a species, but since then, the sightings haven't stopped. Rangers, biologists, hikers, even truck drivers, they've all reported the same thing. A dog-like creature with tiger stripes, a stiff gait, and a bone-chilling scream unlike any animal alive today. For decades, the scientific world dismissed these reports as hoaxes or mistaken identity. A fox with mange, a dog seen at dusk, a trick of the light. But now, something's changed. In 2024, a thermal camera captured a strange heat signature in Tasmania's wilderness. It moved stiffly, awkwardly, just like the thylacine was once known to do. And in 2025, scientists made a chilling announcement. They've sequenced 99.9% .9 of the Tasmanian tiger's DNA. This isn't just about sightings anymore. It's about science. It's about obsession. And it's about whether this extinct predator ever really left us at all. Because the line between legend and reality is getting thinner every day. And the Tasmanian tiger? might just be waiting in the shadows before it became a mystery. Before it vanished into legend, the Tasmanian tiger was very real. Known officially as the Thylacine, this animal wasn't a tiger at all. It wasn't even a cat. It was a marsupial carnivore, one of the most unique predators evolution ever produced. It had the head of a dog, the stripes of a tiger, and the posture of something that never quite belonged. Its jaws could unhinge nearly 90 degrees, powerful enough to crush bone. It didn't move like a wolf or a panther. It loped stiffly. Its long tail acted as a counterbalance. Its hind legs were longer than its front, giving it an awkward, almost otherworldly gait. To the untrained eye, it looked like a mistake of nature, but it wasn't. It was a marvel, perfectly adapted to hunt in the wilds of Australia, Tasmania, and parts of New Guinea for tens of thousands of years. And yet, by the early 20th century, it was gone. When European settlers arrived in Tasmania, they saw the thylacine not as a marvel, but a menace. It was blamed for killing sheep and livestock, though in reality, Feral dogs were usually to blame. The government placed bounties. Farmers hunted it relentlessly. And zoos paid to collect the last few, locking them in cages far from their wild homes. The final blow came in 1936, when the last confirmed thylacine, named Benjamin, died in the Hobart Zoo. Alone, forgotten, locked outside its shelter on a freezing night, that was supposed to be the end, but what came next changed everything. Benjamin may have been the last official thylacine, but if that's true, someone forgot to tell the wilderness. Because since 1936, the Tasmanian tiger has refused to stay extinct, and the world hasn't stopped seeing it. The first reports came within weeks of Benjamin's death. Then, in the 1940s, more the 1960s, dozens, the 1980s, hundreds, and not just from casual hikers or overexcited tourists. In 1982, Hans Narding, a respected park ranger, reported seeing a thylacine in northwest Tasmania. He described its gait, tail, and behavior in stunning detail, details that only someone trained in wildlife observation could provide. His credibility rock solid, and he wasn't the only one. By 2024, the number of reported sightings had ballooned to over 4,000. One came from a man named Zach, and this time there were photos. Zach and his father were driving a remote Tasmanian road when they spotted what they assumed was an injured dog. But as they approached, the animal bared its teeth, 
and let out a shriek unlike anything they'd ever heard. It vanished into the brush, but not before Zack managed to snap several photos. The images were grainy, unclear, but the shape, the posture, the stripes, they looked uncannily like a thylacine. Then came the thermal footage. Captured in October 2024, a thermal camera scanning a mob of marsupials picked up a strange figure. Medium-sized, with a heat signature consistent with a carnivore, and a movement pattern unlike any fox or dingo. It moved awkwardly, stiffly. Some even claimed it stood on two legs for a brief moment. Exactly what historical accounts said the thylacine could do. Believers were electrified. Skeptics pointed to a fox with mange. And they had a point. Diseases like sarcoptic mange can deform foxes so severely they appear hairless, gaunt, and strange. Even their tails become rigid, mimicking the thylacine's look. So, what do we make of it? Coincidence, misidentification, or something else? Because if these were just mistakes, why are they still happening? We've spent decades combing the forests of Tasmania. Thousands of hours. Dozens of expeditions. Endless trail cams. But what if we've been looking in the wrong place all along? Here's what many don't realize. The thylacine wasn't exclusive to Tasmania. It once lived across mainland Australia and even parts of New Guinea. And in those dense, mist-covered jungles, sightings haven't stopped. In the remote highlands of West Papua, locals speak of a creature with a striped back, stiff tail, and piercing eyes. They call it by different names, like Dosegna. But their descriptions, uncannily similar to the thylacine. No cameras, no footprints, just stories passed down for generations. At first, scientists dismissed them, but then something strange started happening. New Guinea became a hotspot for what biologists call Lazarus species. Animals thought extinct that reappear as if nature had simply hit undo. In 2022, the black-naped pheasant pigeon was rediscovered after vanishing for 140 years. So was the bronze quail. The New Guinea big-eared bat re-emerged after a century. Even the near-mythical golden-mantled tree kangaroo returned from presumed extinction. New Guinea is a land of secrets, a place where thick jungles swallow entire ecosystems, untouched by modern humanity. Could the thylacine be hiding there, just out of reach? It's not just possible, it's plausible. Because in terrain so remote, so unforgiving, a population of shy, nocturnal predators could survive for decades without a single confirmed sighting. And if so, the question isn't whether we'll find them. It's whether they've been watching us all along. In 2025, the unthinkable became real. A team of geneticists at Colossal Biosciences announced they had reconstructed 99.9% .9 of the thylacine genome. Only 45 gaps remain, tiny missing pieces in a near-complete map of a long-dead animal. That's not science fiction. That's resurrection by design. It started with museum specimens, century-old skins, bones, even preserved tissue. From these, scientists extracted fragile strands of DNA and something even more elusive, RNA. Why does that matter? DNA is the blueprint. It tells you what parts to build. But RNA, that's the instruction manual. It reveals how those parts were actually used inside a living thylacine, how it grew, functioned, and possibly even behaved. Armed with that information, scientists turned to CRISPR, a revolutionary gene editing tool that lets them cut, replace, and rewrite DNA with surgical precision. Their goal? Insert thylacine genes into the DNA of a close living relative, a tiny marsupial called the fat-tailed dunnart. 
At first glance, it's a strange match. The Dunart is mouse-sized, fragile, and looks nothing like a predator. But genetically, it's family. Once edited, these modified embryos are being developed in bioengineered pouches, artificial wombs designed to replicate the marsupial pouch environment. Because unlike humans, marsupials give birth to tiny, underdeveloped young that finish growing outside the womb. That means scientists don't need a living mother to bring a thylacine to term. Just a pouch, a blueprint, and enough precision to get it right. If they succeed, the result won't be a hybrid. It won't be a guess. It will be a Tasmanian tiger by every genetic standard. But creating life from death isn't just a technical challenge. It's a philosophical one. And the biggest questions are still ahead. Just because we can bring it back, does that mean we should? That's the question dividing scientists, ethicists, and conservationists around the world. Reviving the Tasmanian tiger sounds like a triumph, a species brought back from extinction, a second chance, a wrong undone. But what happens next? The Tasmania of 1936 is not the Tasmania of today. Since the thylacine's disappearance, the island's forests have changed. Human activity has expanded. Foxes and feral dogs have spread. Diseases have evolved. The ecosystem that once supported this apex predator may no longer exist, at least not in the way it did before. So where would it live? In a fenced reserve? A national park? A lab facility? Would it truly be wild again, or just a symbol behind glass? Critics argue that we're chasing nostalgia, that the millions being poured into de-extinction projects should instead be used to protect endangered species that still have a chance. Creatures like orangutans, rhinos, pangolins, all vanishing faster than we can count. And there's another problem. What if bringing the thylacine back doesn't work? What if it struggles to survive? Or becomes a new invasive threat? Or worse, what if we succeed in creating it, only to watch it die out again? But supporters see something else. They believe this technology could change everything. Bringing back the thylacine isn't just about one species. It's a proof of concept, a roadmap that could be used to preserve genetic material, restore damaged ecosystems, and save species that are teetering on the edge right now. And then there's the ecological argument. When the thylacine disappeared, its prey exploded in number. Wallabies, possums, kangaroos, their populations surged, leading to vegetation loss and ecosystem imbalance. Reintroducing the thylacine could help restore that balance, rebuild what was broken. Maybe it's not about playing God. Maybe it's about repairing what humanity destroyed in the first place. But that decision, whether it lives again, won't be made in a forest. It'll be made in a lab. So where does that leave us? Thousands of sightings, blurry photographs, thermal footage, ancient DNA, rebuilt strand by strand, and a creature that refuses to be forgotten. For nearly a century, the Tasmanian tiger has lived in a strange space between science and myth. Too recent to feel like a legend. Too mysterious to be fully gone. Some say it's still out there, hiding in the last untouched forests of Tasmania, or in the fog-drenched highlands of New Guinea. Watching, waiting, always just out of reach. Others believe its return won't come through a trail camera, but through a microscope. That the first true thylacine we see in the 21st century will take its first breath inside a lab. And maybe both are true. Maybe the last thylacine never died, and maybe the next one hasn't been born yet. But here's what we know for certain. Our obsession with this animal hasn't faded. It's only grown stronger. Because in a world that keeps losing species by the hour, 
the dream of reclaiming even one is intoxicating. Not because it erases what we did, but because it might mean we've finally learned something from it. So, is the Tasmanian tiger extinct? Or is it out there, right now, moving silently through the underbrush? Or curled in a synthetic pouch, cells dividing under artificial light? No matter the answer, one truth remains. This story isn't over. Not yet. <laughs>